This is a Resonance 104.4 FM, flipping marvellous, as you know by now. I'm Nick Hennigan, and welcome to another episode of Literary London, where we talk about things, well, kind of literary and london E. Uh, it's all in the name, isn't it? How are you this fine week? Well, uh, if you're listening in stereo on 104.4 FM, you can probably see that not only are we uh, on the wireless, uh, we're also on a podcast at the new website, uh, Bohemian Britain, which still makes me laugh, bohemianbritain.com, and of course, uh, londonliteraryfobcrawl.com. And for the first time in oh, this month, actually, a new initiative, we're uh, on YouTube. Oh, there's no stopping my technological advances, love. Oh, there isn't, eh? I'm down there with the kids. We've got our own YouTube channel. Well, actually, I say we, it's actually the Maverick Theatre Company. So uh, if you are listening in stereo, you can probably see me waving at you. And uh, if you are listening in stereo, you can also probably see that I've been joined this week by Linda Shannon and Celia Gilbert from the Rose Theatre. So wave nicely to the radio audience at home. <laughs> um, and uh, it's we're talking about one of my kind of favourite places in London. And if you if you don't know it's there, well, you will after this show. Uh, it's a, a, a remarkable place with a remarkable story. And it's the Rose Playhouse. And I have called it the right name, having given it that build up. The Rose Playhouse. And um, well, I, I, I won't tell you about the history. Let's let's ask the, the experts. So because Linda, you're a volunteer and you're involved in the Friends, which we'll talk about as well, how people can get involved with this. And Celia, you've sort of come in quite recently, haven't you? Is the you were saying earlier, sort of general manager, come programmer, come. So just tell us a bit about yourself and just tell us about the remarkable. Rose Playhouse. Okay, well, um, I I came in about June, a year ago, last June, I think it was, um, and uh, I started because there was a lot of imminent work going on the the building above the Rose, um, because we're in the basement of it, um, is being redeveloped, and uh, there was going to be a lot of activity. And at some stage or other, it was going to be a case of not being able to probably have visitors on site as we had and having a lot of scaffolding around and not being identified as anything much at all. So uh, a, a lot of the job at first I thought was was going to be coordinating between the building contractors and um, and the chair chairman of the trust who I work for, um, Harvey Sheldon. And um, and then it's, it, it kind of started being, uh, because the, they haven't got the funding to have anybody permanently there, um, it, it just it started to be a, a little part-time job. And, uh, and then it's kind of grown, <laughs> it's grown quite a lot. Um, and it's kind of a bit of everything that needs doing, really. Um, and so there's a kind of, there's obviously emails and things, um, that kind of traffic to deal with. And then um, there's coordinating all the other things um, that, go, that go on. And there were a few events that we did over that first year I was there, but come October, November, we kind of pretty much slowed down because there's no facilities on site and there's no um, uh, uh, running water and everything. So it's not a place to be in the winter. Um, so we carry on, just doing the open days on a Saturday and during the daytime. But then it started becoming um, very difficult because the, the scaffolding went up and there was very little to say that we were there. So we decided to, um, to, to stop things for a while really, wasn't it, Linda? And then, uh, <laughs> and then um, blow me down in January, February, on comes a COVID and uh, really kind of dictates the future for a bit. So um, we we had been kind of thinking of another way we could do of attracting visitors in a different way. And um, and it was kind of a, an idea that grew, well, perhaps we could do some online talks or something like that, because um, people might be interested about the period, um, the playwrights involved, associated with the theatre, et cetera. Um, so we kind of thought, oh, well, let's just ask a couple of people and there was this we we made up a little events team of other other volunteers and one of the trustees as well um and uh and and we decided that quite a few of us knew quite a lot of people that we could perhaps ask a few favors from um or if we didn't know them terribly well they might be just interested in talking about the subject that they 
they like. So that's kind of where it grew and it's just kind of taken off a bit. We do one every other week and um, uh, and uh, we, we have a, we use our ticket booking site still and we charge five pounds and, and now we charge, sorry, we charge six pounds and uh, uh. five pounds. Five pounds friends um and then we also uh, offer it up to students um in various drama colleges or you know kind of literature associated students studying um and so that they can come uh, for free because the rose is very interested in being able to develop educationally as well as um, um through the theater so i mean they're called yes they're called the rose at webinars in fact i've been on a couple Right, jolly good they are as well. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about the, the I, I started adapting Shakespeare back in 1992, don't you know? And, uh, uh, we, you know, through Maverick Theatre, we've been all over the world, actually, with these sort of truncated versions. But let's talk about the Playhouse itself, the Rose Playhouse, because it's a remarkable story, isn't it? I mean, if you if you didn't know it was there, you're talking about those works, uh, uh, you, you mentioned it's actually underneath an office block. I mean, so it's just tell us the history and, and what it happened and how it actually changed planning law in this country, didn't it? Yeah. Do you want to say a little bit? Um, I'll say a little bit, yes. Um, well, the Playhouse was originally built in 1587, refurbished a little bit by 1592, and then kind of fell out of favour um, and into disrepair around 1605. There was a lot of competition from other theatres and it kind of lay dormant for most of that time even though it was sort of there on ordnance survey maps and so forth. And in, uh, so an office block had been built over the site. And in 1989, this was going to come down and another office block was going to be built over the top, except it was really going to be over the top of the ruins. So in that time at 1989, I wasn't involved in it, but many people, including celebrities were, um, and there was a protest about the whole thing. Um, and in the end, the government, Mrs. Thatcher at the time, the government had to recognise that this was an important building and it did in, uh, change legislation at that point. Um, so in 1989, uh, before the second office block was put up over, um, it was agreed, first of all, that there would be the opportunity to excavate the ruins. They had a very, very small window of time in which to do this. Um, they did discover the foundations and reveal them. Um, what they weren't able to do in that time was to do the whole site. So actually, when you go into the building, you'll see a wooden floor where our performance space is. And that is actually the remaining third of the archaeological site, which has yet to be excavated. And that's really what we're hoping uh, will come about when the building works are completed. Um, so the protests at the time involved a great number of people. So Simon Hughes, who's still on our board, uh, many people like uh, Dustin Hoffman, um, Dame Peggy Ashcroft, Sir Peter Hall, all these luminaries came along and held these protests. And we have got footage of all of that. And ultimately, yes, the Rose was saved in that at the present time, the, the lower end of the office block is some several feet above the site so that it is now possible to see the, the, the site even though it's preserved um, with a kind of area above which we hope will be a space in which we can build something more modern over the top of the existing site. Yeah so the office blocks effectively on stilts over over the remains of the theatre. It is quite remarkable isn't it that, that such a gem really yes. <laughs> is going to be yes. so <laughs> And because yes. uh, you again, when you actually get outside the rose, you have to kind of look for it because it is you're literally under an office. But tell us about when we open up again, the physical location and what's actually at the site, because the actual remains are still covered in water, aren't they, for preservation? Yes, that's right. I mean, um, when they were excavating in the open air, they realised that a lot of it was drying out and crumbling. So again, with a very short um, window of time in which to work, they decided to cover it in concrete and sand and flood it with water. The fact that the theatre had been very near to the river itself in the 16th century meant that the reason it was preserved was the water itself, the wet mud. Um, and so they reverted a bit like the Mary Rose, you know, it's, it's preserved in that way. So they reverted to covering it over with water. So visitors when they came would see a pond 
but we had it marked out with different colored lights for where the, the galleries were, where the two stages were, because in the refurbishment in 1592, the stage was moved back, but we marked out where the original stage was as well. It's a remarkable place, isn't it? It's uh, it's quite magical uh, when is. you go in there. And of course, hopefully, we'll all be able to go places uh, fairly soon. Um, yep. uh, so w w w tell us about the, I must actually comment as well, because we're, we're on Rim Vision as well. You've got, I don't know if you don't mind me saying, your, your, because you've got some lovely little kind of memorabilia in your background, which look vaguely Shakespeare. I actually got, if you're watching on YouTube, I've got William Shakespeare here, here with me, uh, <laughs> my constant chum. He is actually about a, an eight inch high, cardboard cutout it's a series of it's a series of cards that someone sent me actually uh, and, and you two look like you're quite keen <laughs> <laughs> well Celia and I both um, were at the globe or I'm still there technically um so we'd known each other for quite some time prior to the rose which was a, this, is, you know, this is Shakespeare's globe which is just up Shakespeare's the globe. yes yes and in actual fact the uh what we know about the rose playhouse which comes a lot from um Philip Henslow's diary, we, we still have the original of in Dulwich College. Much of what we know about the rose helped to inform the building of the replica of Shakespeare's Globe. Mm. Incredible, isn't it? It's a great area, I have to say. For a short time, I actually worked at Shakespeare's Globe as well uh, for a university, for an American university. They, um, I was Rutgers. <laughs> Rutgers, yeah, that's right, yeah. Actually, I, I was company manager. They really needed a stage manager. But for a while, I had a little corner office in Bear Gardens, and it got Sam's office. And Sam, of course, was Sam Wanamaker, the American who really drove through the whole notion of Shakespeare's Globe. And I do remember going there in the, I suppose, early 90s, it would have been, when my, my I did this adaptation of Henry V called Henry V Line of England, which did quite well at the Edinburgh Festival and went to America. And they were talking about putting it in the Globe. The problem is it was a one-man show and very technical. And that, of course, isn't what the Globe is about. But the main thing I remember from that time is just how run down and almost dangerous that area felt which if you go down there nowadays is, is, is the antithesis of what it was. So, I mean, you and, and the, the globe have completely revitalized that area of London, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To a certain extent, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Nick Hennigan. This is uh, Literary London on Resonance 104.4 FM. We're talking about the Rose uh, Playhouse in London. We'll talk about how you can physically get there as well later on. Although, of course, at the moment, in the midst of lockdown in 2021, it's not really an issue. And we're talking specifically about the uh, Rose webinars, which are a fascinating thing. And of course, I suppose one of the upsides of this whole pandemic, I mean, there's the three of us now chatting remotely uh, because, yes, we are envisioned on the Maverick Theatre uh, Facebook, uh, what's, uh, what's going YouTube page, thank you. <laughs> um, we're also going to be on the literarylondon.com uh, uh, podcast page and we're going to be on the new uh, bohemianbritain.com. Uh, makes me smile slightly because this this particular radio show has been voted the number two bohemian uh, 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 thing to follow on the internet, which makes me laugh slightly. How can you be a good bohemian? Suffer, <laughs> not get money, starve a bit, you know. Anyway, that's by the by. Uh, so we're envisioned as well, and I suppose one of the upsides of that is that who'd ever who'd ever, who'd ever heard in the world of Zoom, you know, two or three years ago, and now here we are. And I guess you must like the fact, in one sense, that you're able to communicate to a to a wider audience through the webinars tell us what what sort of subjects are they on and what sort of people have you got involved oh well uh we've had gosh we've had everything from a one woman richard the third uh, and and again visiting doing hamlet we've had um uh, adrian scarborough doing lockdown lallygagging um we've had uh, what's lally gagging i've got to ask what lally gagging was a kind of terminology he, he used for it was like a kind of gossip thing wasn't it um yeah the sort of hanging about kind yeah, of idea much yeah. of it was about his allotment and the courgettes that he was growing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we had that and we, then we've had a, a a group of who are very um associated with elizabethan and period music so they came and did a couple of sessions for us as well uh, and one round around Christmas with Christmas music. And um, and then we've had um, uh, actors doing kind of soliloquies or mixtures of their work in sh with Shakespeare or Marlowe. We've had Marlowe historians. 
um, uh, because Marlowe was very much a featured playwright in the in the life of the Rose, and um, and then last week we had Sir Stanley Wells and Paul Edmondson do talk about their recent book called All the Sonnets of Shakespeare, and tonight we've got Dame Janet Susman coming to do her. Um, uh, account of, of when she directed Cleopatra um, in South Africa and when she played it here at the RSC and but particularly when she directed Kim Cattrall in it and um, so she's going to be talking about that tonight and then they each of them get f followed by a question and answer session. Um, sometimes they're in a webinar format, sometimes they're in depending rather on the artist as to whether they're on a um, on a usual Zoom kind of messaging format, um, but a lot of um, a, a lot of actors just prefer to do it quietly to camera, <laughs> um, and uh, and I think it's taken it's taken people quite a, a long while to get used to Zoom and and how how it best works. And it's it's nice to be able to mute people, but sometimes you can't always guarantee to do it. <laughs> Um, so yes, it's it's been a it, it's usually been surrounding either the period of the rose, uh, the kind of um, playwrights that put on plays there, um, and are and people who are associated with the rose. Dame Janet is a patron of the rose, and um, another actor a few months ago came and did Michael Pennington, and he came and talked about his association with with uh, characters and and the plays. I'm always a fan of my, Michael Pennington and Michael Bogdanov did the English Shakespeare Company a few years ago, didn't they? Yeah. Took large scale, exploding Shakespeare, which I'm a fan of, took that around the world. That's fantastic. And so you say you're involved sort of, I mean, apart from the Rose, uh, you're also involved in the in the Globe as well. Professionally, is that or is that and that's how you met? What's your, do you mind talking a bit about that just briefly? Uh, well, I was I was front of house manager there for me, yeah, 14 years or something. Um, and uh, but I was uh, first of all, I was a, a volunteer there, like um, Linda is, and um, so I've had a kind of long association there with the Globe, and the Globe has quite a, an involvement with the Rose in quite a few different ways, really. Oh. So it's very, uh, and the future of the area, you were talking about the area a while ago, they're really looking at how they can bump up the culture within the area of which there's quite a lot and try and bring it to a modern audience and so I think we're going to find pedestrianized streets and uh, kind of very much more alive for the for the uh, person who walks between London Bridge and, and the Tate and uh, try and and rejuvenate that space and that's something um, Better Bankside are working with us on so that would be uh, um, interesting to see how that develops but um, Linda, you just say your involvement with the Globe. Yeah, how did you, how did you, yeah, sorry, Linda, please do. Well, no, I, I mean, I've been a steward there for, if you count last year, 25 years. Oh. Um, so, you know, quite long in the tooth in that respect. Um, but it was because I was a steward at the Globe that I discovered the Rose. Um, for a long time, it was completely shut and, and nobody knew it was there at all uh, in terms of the general public. And then once or twice when I was on my way to or from the Globe, they would open it up. Um, and then I did go in and have a look. And then in 2011, that's when I became a volunteer at the Rose. So I've been there now, it's my 10th year anniversary. Um, and so I kind of go between the two, um, but um, I'm probably more involved with the Rose at the moment um, because the globe has been closed anyway. Um, and because um, they, we've been having these open days, which of course aren't happening at the moment, but we are thinking very, tentatively and cautiously about reopening maybe in September. And um, the open days originally were based on the idea of people just walking past, they could drop in um, and they would either, they would certainly watch a film, which we have about the history of the Rose narrated by um, Sir Ian McKellen, though I normally call him Gandalf. Um, and then we would talk to them either about um, costume and give them a demonstration of Elizabethan costume um, or we would give them um, items to handle which come from the time of the rose, not actually found at the rose, but they're 400 years old. And we would give them an insight into Elizabethan life, lifestyles uh, through these objects. 
Um, and then there was also one on Elizabethan theatre, which I used to lead because I'm a retired drama teacher. Um, so we would get people to do a little bit of a play of Shakespeare using what are called cue scripts, which is a sort of, you know, just the, the actor's own role and nothing else. So we tried to make them as interactive as possible. Um, whether or not we can do the same thing with all the limitations of COVID, we don't know, but we would certainly like to have the rows open again and invite people in, even though it may have to be through timed tickets, pre-booking and all that kind of business. Because it is, it is very close. So if people who will know perhaps where, where the globe is, where the Shakespeare's globe is by the side of the River Thames, and you kind of come out of the globe and turn right and turn left. And is it Bear Gardens you're on? What's, uh, on what? Park Street. It's Park, Park Street, yeah. yeah. And we so, are actually opposite the site of the original globe, of course. I was about to say, because the, the, where the Globe Theatre is now is not the original site, yes. is it? No, no. Tell us it, a bit about that. Well, it's because um, the, the original site, what's left of it, there are listed buildings there. So although they did a bit of excavation, they weren't allowed to do any building. And so what they had to do was find another space. And that was the Globe, in, as it is now. It's a kind of a glorious glory, isn't it, <laughs> that uh, London and particularly that area of London, which, as I was mentioning earlier, wasn't wasn't particularly attractive. And I'm sorry if you live there, love it's a nice place to live. But uh, as a friend of mine has a flat there, but, but it, it was uh, it, all this kind of layer upon layer of history. And going back to the original, uh, was it 1989 uh, uh, debacle? They were just going to kind of dig it up and throw it away, which is. Uh, mm -hmm. Incredible, isn't it? So um, if people would like to get in touch with you, what's the best way of doing that? They can email us on info at roseplayhouse.org.uk and that email will will get them um, you know any any answers to any questions they have or as many as I can answer um, or go to our website www.roseplayhouse dot org dot uk and pretty much that gives a very some very accurate um information about the virtual rows and um what we what we're doing now and what what happened before and other references to elizabethan and, and um and the history of, of the rows basically uh, so that that's my, and then on the website they they can donate <laughs> give us um some some money for our um future ambitions and um and also um become a friend um and there's an opportunity that there's a page for each of, of, of that information um and uh, we're also on facebook and twitter we try and spread the news about the uh, the webinars as well so uh, uh I think in some way or other, people can find out quite a lot. Uh, <coughs> it, it took took us a while to kind of get going, didn't it? But um, it, it seems to um, be an easier easier thing for, for people to join. And it, it has, as you were saying earlier, um, it, it's brought an audience that we couldn't have possibly had um, at the Rose itself. A, because there's only 50 people. Um, and we're getting people who are coming from all over the world, actually, because we had one lecture that was given by a professor over in Australia. So we had to hold it at a slightly different time in order that she wasn't kind of working in the middle of her night. And um, uh, and that was all about the 3D, doing Dr. Faustus in 3D and, and looking at how the rose would have looked. And that was really so it's kind of we've had quite a varied stretch of uh, things surrounding on the period but of, of interest to of different types of people um and then and what's the, what do the uh, what what does the friend what does being a friend involve because linda you're you're are you the chair of the friends or you're no no, no um i'm uh, on the committee but i've had several different roles within that um we meet periodically about once a quarter to discuss how we could as friends promote the rows um, we've held a number of events, one of which was my suggestion of what was called a readathon. It started as 12 hours of reading plays. Uh, we cut it down to six because it was so cold. Um, but we've, um, we've organised, um, again, talks on site when it was possible to be there, visits to other places. Um, if we had performances, which I guess we hope to uh, start up again, friends got a discount on the ticket price. And there's a monthly newsletter which has all kinds of different things in it, some 
uh, very academic articles and some gossip and uh, so on and so forth. Um, I think those are the main benefits of being a friend. It's only £20 a year. And even if you didn't necessarily take part in any of those um, visits or that sort of thing, if we can get them going again, you're actually supporting the rose. So, you know, it's a, it's a good way of keeping the rose going, even if you personally don't benefit a great deal from it at the moment because of all the limitations we have. And so, and what got you involved, Linda? I say you're an ex-drama school. You must love it, though. Do you love drama it? What, what do you love about it? Sorry, drama teacher. Yeah. Drama teacher, yeah. yeah. What, what do I love what? about the rose? Yeah. Well, it was the first playhouse, and you have to call it a playhouse because it was an open air theatre. Um, it, it, it's got, um, it was the first one on Bankside. Uh, we've got so much knowledge about it from the uh, diaries of Philip Henslow, the, um, some of the scripts that they have down at Dulwich College, a great deal of information there. The Tudor period, I think everybody's fascinated by it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and going back to what you said earlier, Nick, you know, there is an atmosphere there. We joke about the ghost of Philip Henslow, mm -hmm. but there is something about that space, even though it's covered in water. Um, and we've got our little performance area, 50 seater, where we do put on plays with that backdrop, the red lights and the water. There is something so unique about it that um, it's worth supporting. It's um, worth being passionate about, I think. Uh, well done, lovely. And, and a perfect way to end because we've run out of time again. <laughs> Having said that, we also, I was actually there uh, for a performance about three or four years ago with my microphone and I went backstage. So um, you can hear that on the LondonLiteraryPodCrawl.com podcast page. And what I'll try and do is uh, get it out again and rebroadcast it on the uh, uh, bohemianbritain.com <laughs> blog as well. So thank you so much. Yes. I say coming in, coming along, Linda Shannon and Celia Gilbert, uh, the Globe Playhouse uh, is, is well, rockin'. Rose. The, the, the Rose Playhouse. What did I just say? Globe. The Globe. Yes. Oh, did I? The Globe. <laughs> the Globe Playhouse is at the road. Come and have a look at the Globe if you like, yes. But the Rose Playhouse is absolutely rocking. Um, uh, www.roseplayhouse.org.uk is where all the information is. As always, if you need to get in touch with me, uh, the easiest way is probably email. Uh, that's radio at Maverick Theatre co.uk radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk and i'll see you next time thanks again guys uh this Thanks. is Drury London. I'm Nick Hennigan, and this is Residence 104.4 FM. <laughs>